Welcome back everybody, I hope you're having a beautiful day. Today we're reading more Nice Guy stories and it's gonna be beautiful. The second day in a row that we're doing story time episodes. We had the neck beards yesterday which was so fun. But yeah, now it's Nice Guy time. And with that being said, enjoy guys. My first neckbeard experience. Hi guys, throwaway account because I don't really like having a Reddit account. Sorry if my grammar sucks, I'm really bad at typing. I watch a lot of nice guy neckbeard posts from QStar and Tim Tam Tom. So here I am. This story isn't crazy, it's short and to the point. So here's the context. I'm a 16 year old trans girl who doesn't want relationships. On an app where you meet people by swiping right or left or doing an instant chat where you talk to a random person. I met this guy with instant chat. I don't remember much of the conversation so here's a summary. Let's call our nice guy Steve. Steve. Hello, beautiful. Me. Hi. What are you doing, wifey? Um, I'm laying in bed and can you not call me wifey? Why? Because it makes me uncomfortable. What? You don't want to be mine? No, I'm not looking for a relationship. Oh, F you then. I don't know if this belongs here and if I experience more, I'll post here. Thank you for reading. I don't think that's a neckbeard or a nice guy. It's just super confusing. Like, what do you mean? What? You don't want to be my wifey? Random person? Oh, F you then. They've got to be trolling, don't they? I gave the blind date nice guy a chance and regretted it. Small content warning. Some mentions of subpar intimacy and nip pinching. This happened back in 2018. I, 26-year-old black woman, met this nice guy via a blind date with a mutual acquaintance. The acquaintance, I lightly called my friend at the time, sent me a message about a guy that she thought was perfect for me, that she met on POF. We'll call him Devon. She sent me a screenshot of his picture and a message about how he responded to a picture that she shared of me. His response was, wow, beautiful. I feel she she might reject me. I felt a little bad for him and I told her to set us up on a date. We agreed to meet at a ramen place. I sent him a message that I'd arrived. That's when I saw him leaning against a beat up looking car. He was a short chubby Asian man, none of which bothered me. What did bother me was that he was smoking. A cigarette at the time, but it got worse down the line. The first date conversation was awkward to say the least and I barely even remember anything about it except that he mentioned that he loved to play video games, lived with roommates and was 420 friendly. I didn't and still still don't smoke at all, but I knew quite a few people that did, so I shrugged it off as part of compromising and accepting flaws. Little did I know that I'd be doing a lot of compromising in this relationship. I knew that I could be awkward myself, and all the time we don't make the best first impressions, so I agreed to keep seeing him. Not too long after, I took Devon to the grocery store because he told me that his car was giving him trouble. Not a big deal, and it gave me the opportunity to see his house and meet his roommates before we headed to the movies. I carried a bag of stuff in, and one of his roommates took me upstairs to show me where to drop it off. When I tell you the red flags were all over the place, my jaw was on the floor with his clothes, the clumps of combed out hair, bottles and chip bags and wads of dollar bills and all chaos. One part of me wanted to run right then, but the other part of me tried to rationalize by saying no one's perfect. You have to compromise in relationships and relationships take work. This cocktail of emotion shot me into what I called a productive rage. I went off on him. I told him to grab some trash bags and we tore through his room and picked up clothes and stripped his bed. His roommates were dying in the other room the whole time. We skipped the movies and we went to the nearest laundromat where we washed and folded everything for the rest of the day. He expressed his gratitude and told me I was the best thing that ever happened to him. After finally getting his room in livable condition, he asked me to stay the night since I was obviously exhausted. I barely got any sleep. The bed was a twin. I was on my side faced and smushed up against the wall. He snored like a chainsaw and whatever sleep I could get was interrupted because because I had to elbow him when he would randomly stop breathing. Nobody is perfect. You must compromise and lasting relationships take work. I'd tell myself this whenever he asked me to stay over for a hellish night's sleep. Okay, speed round. I hate it when he went to kiss me, especially after smoking. He never bothered to get his car fixed and I'd drive Devon to and from work like I was his taxi. He got upset when I was on my phone and watching videos with any type of feminist themes, saying that they were toxic. He wanted me to sit and watch him play video games, but disregarded me whenever I asked for games that we could both play because I enjoy video games too. Just not with highly sexualized anime themes. He bragged about being a good lover but latching onto me like an algae sucking fish <laughs> on aquarium glass made me think otherwise. He was high the majority of the time. I honestly didn't even know until he admitted it to me and asked me to be around him when he wanted to try acid. I still remember the one day he agreed to be sober and we went out to dinner. I appreciated that day because I felt like I could talk to him authentically 
quickly. However, at dinner, he admitted to eating an edible before leaving the house, and I saw in real time how it was taking effect as he slowly slipped away from me. Everything came to a head when the trip happened. He wanted me to drive with him to Asheville to meet his sister who was visiting for the first time. Cool, we agreed to split the cost of a rental car and hotel. On the day of, when I was ready to pick up the rental car, he told me that his license was suspended because he stopped paying his car insurance when the car broke down. This meant that he couldn't legally drive. He paid the DMV $500 in fines and thus couldn't help pay for the rental. I had to take my car. I recently finished repairs and maintenance, but I didn't get the chance to test drive it to make sure everything was stable. So I had to drive six and a half hours over 400 miles on a wing and a prayer there and back all alone. And I mean alone. He said that he'd keep me company, but 30 minutes into the trip, he fell asleep. Thank God for audio books. His sister was nice enough though. I didn't appreciate the first thing she did when we picked her up from the airport was touch my hair, which was in an afro at the time and asked me to give her cornrow braids. I don't know how to do those. I was exhausted getting back after another six hour drive. On the way home, there was a hurricane approaching our city and one of his friends called and said that their house burnt down. No way. Devin was rightfully upset and I offered him to stay at my place until we were able to figure something out. When we arrived to look at the damage, turns out there wasn't any and the whole thing was some sick prank. Wow, that's so not cool. I was livid and I found nothing funny about that at all. But he told me that I was overreacting and that his friends simply played a prank. But he loved me for how caring I was wanting to help him in his time of need. Something was brewing inside of me. I didn't know what it was, but I knew that my give and take compromising fuse was getting really short. I ended up staying over since the storm was starting. Streets flood quickly here. His roommates went out of town, so we had the house to ourselves. The next morning, we were supposed to make breakfast together. As usual, it turned into a solo activity. He slept in and when he did wake up, just stood there and stared at me the whole time. Just deep breaths and he decided that since I was here, today was the day that he'd try his acid strip. I mostly wanted to be left alone and watch My Little Pony, which was my comfort show at the time. He called it stupid, childish and girly, but at that point I just didn't care. I was just waiting at the storm and I needed to spend some time away from him after that. I guess the acid kicked in because he was talking about how vibrant and colourful everything was. After one episode, he wanted to get up and watch something more manly and less cringy. Cringy like all of this behaviour? Like a horror anime. That sounded like a bad idea, so I hugged him and I tried to convince him to stay and do something that I like to do for once. While I was hugging him, he pinched my nipples painfully hard. I pushed him back and I was like, what the hell? He responded, you shouldn't have held me like that since I'm super out of it. On this damn strip that he wanted me to witness, I finally had enough. Screw compromising, relationships take work, but clearly this one was not working. Hurricane be damned, I packed all of my things and I drove home. I was completely numb the whole process. After being bombarded with half-assed apologies, the I'll never do it again, I'll quit smoking, and I swear I'm a good guy, my only response was to send him the music video to Can't Raise a Man by K. Michelle. He responded, I don't see what this has to do with me. I blocked his number and his socials. I told my friend about what happened and she said that maybe I should give him a second chance. I no longer talk to her either. I learned to trust my instincts from the get-go. It was hard, especially now knowing that all this time I was an undiagnosed neurodivergent that had a hard time picking up social cues. Still, I learned what to look out for. Don't give them chances ever. Yeah, that sucks so much, but at least you're out of there. You're trying to tell yourself that everything's good, but it just isn't. Like it really isn't. Nice guy acts innocent until I admit that I no longer like him. Hi, this is my first post. This may not be as drastic as other stories, but this was my first nice guy encounter. Sorry for any spelling or grammar mistakes. This started back in quarantine. It was my second week staying at home and like everybody else, I turned to social media to waste my time. A guy, let's call him Yikes, <laughs> started following me on Instagram and liked three of my recent pictures. I liked three of his recent pictures back and I didn't think much of it. What's the bet they assumed that they were already in a relationship or something? A few minutes later, he messages me. I didn't know him, but I saw another one of my friends, let's call her Warren, was following him. So I asked her if she knew anything about Yikes. Warren had told me that Yikes texted her and wanted them to start talking. Warren had a boyfriend at the time, so she let him know. Yikes got mad and said that Warren had let him on and lied to him, so he blocked her. A few months after, Yikes had unblocked Warren and started texting her again, but Warren didn't answer. I thanked Warren for her information and I thought people change, so I replied and we began talking. Mistake number one. After talking to Yikes for about two weeks, he began to ask about relationships. I told him about the last one and said the famous nice guy words. Well, I'll never treat you like that. He told me about his and I noticed he made each one of the girls he dated sound like a horrible person. 
person. And at the time, I thought Yikes was just unlucky with relationships. A week after that, Yikes told me that he was talking to other girls. Even though we were talking in a possible relationship way, I forgave him and I said it was okay since we weren't actually dating. Mistake number two, Yikes partied a lot, like every weekend, even with the pandemic and his friends possibly having COVID, he still partied. At one party, Yikes began to say some personal things that I will not mention, and I tried my best at being uplifting and supportive. Yikes blocked me. At the time, I thought I did something wrong, and I took it as if he got mad. The next morning, he unblocked me, and he pretended as if nothing happened. When I asked him about it, he avoided the question. I never brought it up again, and I forgave him. Third mistake, we would no longer have conversations since he would just excessively compliment me, which was nice at first, but just became annoying since I really just wanted to know about his day. So I texted him less and less. He'd get mad that I wasn't texting him 24-7, even though he would only text me when he felt like it. Yesterday, he said that since I'm no longer showing interest, we should stop talking. We're both wasting our time. I appreciated how he was being mature and agreed. I thought Yikes and I would just continue as acquaintances, but nope, he blocked me again. I thought, oh well, and I thought that was the end of Yikes. I was wrong. This morning, Yikes unblocked me and texted me once again to say that he felt something towards me, but I obviously didn't. I sent Yikes a very lengthy message explaining how I felt before I lost feelings and why I lost feelings. Pretty much everything I said above. I also added that it was my bad for not bringing anything up. The only thing he took from that message was, I don't like you not bringing anything up. I don't like you complimenting me. To which he replied, I'm sorry I said you were important. I then told him that he didn't understand my message and that I didn't say that. Yikes then went on to say, I like you, but okay. And finished off with, good luck finding someone else just don't complain when they treat you like crap. I laughed and I left him on red. Thank God we never ended up dating. Edit, I took the advice and I blocked him. But now we made another account to try and talk to me. Wow, all of that was so immature. Imagine having the audacity to block somebody and then unblock them in the morning and pretend like you didn't do it. Like not to sound rude, but the person you're gonna actually wanna be with isn't gonna be doing stuff like this. Yeah, like the top comment says, definitely block him again. He sounds like the sort of person to berate you if and when you do enter a relationship with someone else. Yeah, 100%. If he calls me babe enough, then I must be his girlfriend. Mobile, so forgive the formatting. To preface this very generic story, I was raised as a sheltered pastor's daughter and have kept certain morals as I've grown. Don't kiss on the first date. F and runs aren't my thing. So yeah, maybe I'm difficult and picky. I admittedly probably shouldn't have joined a dating app, but I did. Mistake number two was letting this guy have my Snapchat within four messages. We ended up matching and this app Bumble has the girls initiate conversation. I sent a generic, hey, how's it going? To which he responded with hard eye emojis and said, you're the most beautiful girl on this app and I love you. Please Snapchat me. Red flags start popping up, but he's kind of funny and I may be a bit desperate. So we moved over to Snapchat. Luckily, I avoided any you know what pictures. He did, however, send me a shirtless picture of him clearly being in the shower within a day. Immediately began calling me babe and darling and wanted to take me out to dinner without even knowing anything about me. He never once asked me any questions about my life or hobbies and wasn't receptive to my questions. He's showering me with compliments as if that's all it takes for me to fall head over heels for him. And he never once asked me anything about myself. I tried opening up conversations by talking about pets or hobbies, but it always twisted into a sickly sweet compliment. My dog is so cute would become, but you're cuter. Or beg for attention. He was like a broken record. For example, when I mentioned I loved animals because they're so cute, he responded with, am I cute enough? He even called me his girlfriend and that if he wanted to keep me, he needed to treat me right or whatever. I told him that he didn't have me yet and he backtracked, but it didn't last long. Later on, still trying to feel him out and see if there was anything good to chase. I mentioned that he might still owe me a birthday dinner as we'd matched on my birthday and he sent me a shirtless shower video saying how since we'd been talking for three days, that was the same as three months of dates. Wrong. A few more messages are exchanged rife with these emojis and more uncalled for babes. Plus a very creepy video of him telling me to have sweet dreams accompanied by a kiss. I finally told him that we were on different wavelengths. All of this stuff probably sounds really mild, but in the situation with this particular guy, it was really creepy and somehow insulting. I don't know if that's because of my upbringing or if my standards are too high, but don't declare your love if you don't even know me. Yeah, no, that's definitely fair enough if you don't know each other. They should not be saying that they love you. That's so weird. I have a reproductive issue. It won't kill me, but for the most part, I can't have kids. I'd confided in a male friend of mine about some of the sadness I was having over it. Coupled with a bad breakup I'd just gone through and he 
he tried to cheer me up by saying, but you're perfect. I was so confused, so I asked him to elaborate. You're hot, you look like Black Widow, you're funny, and you can't ever get pregnant. What guy wouldn't want you? When I told him that wasn't a compliment, he told me that I'm too much of a social justice warrior to see when a real gentleman pays me a compliment. Nah. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. Amazing how unbelievable some people are. Oh, you don't know a real gentleman. I feel like it's time to read something a little bit more wholesome. You like rock? Dude, I love rock. Hell yeah, rock's the best. Oh, <laughs> I'm rock and they love me so much. I never thought I'd say this, but it's so good to see a happy rock. The ratio of dog to boy stayed constant. Oh, so big and so fluffy. Pretty much a bear. A happy, friendly, beautiful bear. If I believe in aliens, then somewhere out in space, there are aliens that probably believe in aliens too, which means someone somewhere believes in me. Yeah, damn right. Aliens believe in us. Once again, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did, you know what to do. Make sure you like and subscribe, all that fun stuff. And the comment of the day goes to Dylan. I love when they think saying, I was being nice, makes whatever they said completely okay. Yeah, a thousand percent. Like, oh, don't worry about what I just said. I was being nice, so it's okay. Or like, I was trying to be nice, when they obviously didn't even try a little bit. Yeah, really not good. Once again, thank you for all your support, guys. I really appreciate it. The channel is doing so well at the moment, and it makes me so happy and so excited for the future. And with that being said, make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say, because I say it every single day. Bye! <laughs>